Chelsea Gray limping. This could be a series changing moment for Vegas. The loss of Chelsea Gray was a huge blow because this is your floor general. This is the quarterback of the team. When you play a sport at such a high level, when you don't have an opportunity to go and do that, it's like a part of you is kind of missing. I know what Chelsea can do if she put her mind to it, especially when it comes down to basketball. It's been a slow transition for her with her injury to the lower leg. With the Aces announcing the signing of 11-year WNBA veteran guard Tiffany Hayes, is this any indication that Chelsea Gray's recovery is going to take longer than expected? I think people are starting to think like, oh man, maybe she's going to be out for longer than we thought. There's been a lot of adversity this season without Chelsea Gray, a lot of question marks and challenges. I would take a 75% Chelsea Gray over a lot of players 100% because Chelsea Gray, she is that type of player. Even on her worst days, she was just like, I just have to get a little better. I have to get a little better every day because I am going to come back. Seven into the game for the first time this season, Chelsea Gray, the point guard, back in action. Man, I miss this game so much. Never taking it for granted, you guys. Our camp and our team, they understand what I was going through and the things that I was trying to overcome, but outside people had no idea. Five-time All-Star, Olympic gold medalist. Vegas with a chance to win the game. She is a competitor. She hates to lose. 1.1, looking for Wilson to put it up! The game winner! For me, it wasn't just about getting on the court and being able to play. It's chasing history. Chelsea Gray, showtime! And I don't want to leave any question of who the best point guard in the world is. Her dedication and her resilience to this game, I'll take her against anybody. Chelsea Gray, the point guard. She's gonna show up when it matters. She always does. Six point game, more than five minutes still to play. Stewart flashes, double. Loses. Plum has it. Chelsea Gray hobbled at the moment for Las Vegas. You just pray that she is okay. It's crazy. I was sitting on the bench, and I saw her kind of come up a little lame on a play. And I was like, Chelsea's hurt. It was a normal play, normal moment that I've done thousands of times. And that was the thousand and one. It was just like, no, it's time to sit down. It almost looked like you could see her mouth something could pop. I was like, there's no way that this is how the story is about to be written. And my heart was broken into so many pieces for Chelsea because I knew how much she wanted it. I knew how much she knew how she meant to us. This could be a series changing moment for Vegas. In the finals to get hurt in a game three situation where you're up 2-0 with a chance to win the championship is devastating. It was like I felt sort of like helpless, like there's nothing that I could do. There's a lot emotionally to deal with, especially when Chelsea is our leader, you know, emotionally, vocally, physically. I'm not gonna lie, I, I had about a two minute cry, not because I felt sorry for myself, but like a frustration cry, like we come all this way and there was like nothing I could do to help those injuries just be better. I mean, that night and the next day, I, I had some emotion, like, um, just in my room. Like, my wife was just like, you could, it's fine, like, you can let it out, um, but you have 24 hours. And then you gotta, like, your mind's gotta change. Becky said something to me when I found out that I wasn't gonna be able to play game four. She was like, your wheels might be down, but that mind isn't. I think that seeing her still have uh, an uplifted spirit and still showing the confidence that she has in the rest of the team. I think that helped lighten the mood a lot and I think that going into that practice, Becky's mindset and Mackie's attitude and her messaging and communication to the team, we still have enough to win. I'll go to war with this group, injured, not injured, I'm going, because I know what's inside. And now, like I said, 
the whole mantra of like here to make you great, that's your mantra to every person that's around this circle. We serve one another. That's the whole basis of what we do. And in the process of serving everybody else, that's when you actually become the greatest. It's the weirdest phenomenon. You know, they always say like, show me who you are when things aren't right. And Chelsea just brought so much energy and focus and confidence. Having that voice in the huddles to be able to be that calming presence, to be able to be that leader that she is, helped us in those moments. AC, you're the second one. Those are the aggressive ones that we can't have to have. Not right now. We need to be solid every single time. You all right? You all right? There were multiple times that I'd go over and talk to her just to see um, kind of what she was seeing. Becky! Becky! Timmy! She was on the court in a, uh, in a boot and she was still coaching. She referred to herself as our, as our fourth assistant. Take that other post out! Two guards in it! Every single time! We're getting where we want offensively because we're making sure that people that are taking the shots are the ones we want to take the shots. Keep playing on that end and we can get whatever we want. The vibe, the approach to the game, like everybody was like, we're gonna win. An unforgettable finish to game four. When they won that game, Chelsea just threw the crutches down and she hobbled into the middle. Her and Asia was there hugging. And I was like, she just threw her crutches. It was a lot of emotion, like, thank you guys. Like, you guys have my back. You know, an injury to Chelsea Gray, this is arguably one of the most important players on the team. She may not be the MVP of the league and of the Aces, but Chelsea is so important to winning. What up, man? What up? You know, just rolling. Just cruising? How yeah. you feeling? I'm good. Have fun up here. Let's check it out. I still don't have all my feeling back. I mean, you have a nerve right through there, so when you have swelling in that area, it'll put pressure on that. I don't think I have swelling. You do a little bit. But it's normal, and it's good, and it means it's healing. Due to Chelsea's nature, how dynamic she is, she's a really strong player, she's constantly moving back and forth, she does a lot of pushing through that left side. Because of that, we see a lot of repetitive use into that area, and I think that's what really contributed to her fifth metatarsal fracture. It's a pretty progressive injury where each week there's a little bit more and a little bit more we can do. So it takes about 12 weeks to get back on that court. I kind of had to reprogram, okay, I'm getting back. I have a baby on the way, like enjoying uh, being a back-to-back -back champion. What does that kind of look like? And so I have to create space to handle that kind of adversity and having the people around me to allow me to kind of delve deep in that and just have all the feels, right? And have confidence in doing that. And then the first, I would say like four or five days after surgery was really tough. Then she felt like she was on the road to recovery and she felt a little bit more optimistic and her mood started to pick up a little bit. Woo! I hate this damn thing. Come on, Chelsea. You got it, good job for sure. Our last one to get this off of me. As an athlete, you, you know, everyone battles physical injuries. Maybe the part that doesn't get talked about as much is the mental toll that it takes uh, on an individual. And I think being able to find ways where she can still um, make an impact and, and that she can still kind of stay in a positive frame of mind, knowing the support that she had behind her. I think it helped with her, with her recovery and, and the approach she took to it that like, look, however long it takes for you to get back, we're still here. We're, we're not going anywhere. We don't want you to go anywhere. You're still the point guard to us. And so um, as long as she's, you know, part of the Aces, she's part of our family. 18, 18, 19, 20. Woo! Throughout the process of rehabbing her foot, there was always a concern about her hip. I knew the hip was going to be something I addressed after season. It was giving me so many issues and it was leading to other stuff and I just didn't want 
something even more serious that would keep me out for months and months. Obviously you can go through the course of the season and there's a lot of bumps and bruises and things that people are playing through, but Chelsea's hip was really a big issue. There were some mornings that she got up out of bed and she could barely walk. Putting shoes on was hard, putting socks on her hard, but she's a warrior. She's gonna get up and do what needs to be done. And so I knew I needed to get stem cell, I needed to get injection, and that was gonna be the first set. It was probably likely that I'd have to do another one and maybe even a third. And so I was just like, I need to get this injection no matter like how painful it is. We're going to go into the actual hip joint. So the, the cool thing about the hip joint is a large capsule. And even though the hip joint is relatively small, we don't have to try to get in here. What we do is we actually put it down here, which is an easy access, which is kind of about right here, because there's a huge joint capsule. Mm -hmm. So as long as we get it right here at the femoral neck, it's a very accessible, very easy place to do it. Am I numb? Uh, you're not numb, because here's the thing. We numb you up. Uh, studies show that it kills stem cells. It does not allow the stem cells to proliferate. So I can't numb the track up. I can numb the outside up, but I'll tell you, most people tolerate this very well. And then and you've been through, you've been through your share of stuff. So yeah, I was I'm not- Because the PRP wasn't very, yeah. it was painful. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. And, and I'm not gonna say this one's not, but as long as you relax, it's a, it's a super quick procedure. Okay. And so um, once we get into that area, um, I delivered the PRP first. So the PRP basically, just think of it, it lubricates it, and then the stem cells go in after, okay. so they combine, and then this, uh, basically the PRP activates stem cells. It helps, it helps them differentiate into the, what we call the chondrocytes, which are the cells that actually can create cartilage around that bone, where you have a little bit of that wear and tear. So you can see, that is the capsule. That's that big capsule, and right where your finger is, there's a perfect, you chose perfectly. That's the femoral neck, so that's where it kind of dips down. So that's the biggest area, so I gotta get the needle in between those two lines. Relax. Halfway there. Relax, 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 relax. Uh, and we are in, okay? Chelsea, have you got a baby name yet? Uh, we're calling them wolf right now. Yeah. Wolf? Until yeah. we can think of one. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Yep. It's going in nice and smooth. <laughs> Almost done. Look, please. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I see that before. <laughs> I that one. Uh. You did good. I, I, don't, I, I know we heard a lot, but I mean, we've seen a lot more than that. Uh. So you did great. I was thinking it was going to be tighter, the ball. You had some... It looked it looked normal almost, so that's always well, I good. Also, well, I haven't been playing yeah. recently, so <laughs> okay, yeah. So so I also had see. a little bit of a break. This is the bottom line: the more uh, functionality, more range of motion, the less pain, the, the more longevity you're going to get. We started working with Chelsea approximately around that four week mark when she got off of crutches and was able to walk in her walking boot. We started with easy marble pickups. We started with ankle TheraBand. We could also work on other components, strengthening knees, strengthening hips. From there, we were able to progress her around that six to eight week mark of weight bearing. So because you can't externally rotate here, mm -hmm. you, your hip internally rotates because that's what it does naturally, but then you compensate by externally rotating your tip, which then gives you that pressure of pushing through your fifth. Okay. And running. That's probably why it fractured on you. So what I want to do is give you a little more stability in glute and adductor, this inside part of your chain, to see if we can. And we, we're talking about possibly putting a small like posterior tip lift, which will I have no orthotics to do. So I'll can you bring, bring him in? Yep, perfect. So as far as running. <laughs> <laughs> so, this girl. She's our what friend. day can I run? So what's today? Today's Wednesday? Today's Wednesday. Let's do every other day. Every other day until yes. I see you guys. Yep, and then we will and start still one minute that. on? We will probably this week do one minute on, and then next week start two minutes on. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool? So an athlete wants to do things. So if we constantly say, okay, we're shutting down everything, normally that athlete is gonna push us away and maybe not really build that trust. But if we find things that they can do safely, that trust and that relationship continues to build.
But with Chelsea, I mean, she's a little stubborn. We know that because she wants to be out doing what she loves to do, which is playing basketball. Even when she's frustrated about maybe, you know, wanting to be 10 steps further ahead, you know, she listens. She ultimately knows that the everybody in the process has her best interests at heart. I think the frustration is understanding and knowing my body and how it feels and feeling good and feeling like you need to do more and want to be in shape right away. When you're rehabbing every day isn't the, the greatest of days, so we had to try to bring some positive energy to her when we could and uh, let her know that, you know, I know you're going through a tough time now, but we're all here for you. You're not going through this alone. And even though it's stationary ball handling and stationary passing and form shooting, uh, she couldn't be more excited and more thrilled to be out onto the court. Around that eight week mark, we were able to start some sport specific strengthening. And that's really where an athlete, you know, gets that buy in and is super eager. What's key is load management with her. We can start to integrate jumping and a little bit of that running and jogging, but we wanna make sure she doesn't do too much at once. So communicating with our strength and conditioning coach, communicating with the rest of the team to ensure that she's staying within those limits and that we don't overload her as she returns back. Obviously, where I remind her like it's an Olympic year, like the season is condensed, like it's, it's gonna be a lot in your body. And, just reminding her to, to take her time. Her first item on the checklist was to be prepared and ready for USA and, and putting herself in a position to, to be on the Olympic team. And sometimes, no matter how minor or major the injury is, you, you tend to get to a point where, well, it doesn't hurt. If, if I can do this, it doesn't really hurt that much. And it can be tough conversations to have with a player who feels like they're at a point that she, that you know, medical may be advising that you're just not, not yet. You know, you're getting close, but you're not there yet. I'm supposed to be loading this week or something, or volume or whatever. We're gonna do more volume and jumping, but in the altered dream is what they want us to do. So, and it doesn't matter that I did stuff yesterday and had felt exactly like zero pain. I mean, to me, that matters, but I am not uh, your team medical. Like, symptoms and stuff are very much a... Indicator. 100%. I agree with you on that. This doesn't make sense. I... Prepared to return to play, so I'm supposed to be loading and doing jumping and cutting next week? Yeah, so we're going to do more endurance. Like, let's do, like, 20 jumps. 15, like, high levels on that. Sure. Then let's do sprinting, unless the surgeon reaches out to her right now and says, I'm comfortable with you starting some way I'm jumping. Okay. Sounds good. I'm sorry. You know, there are moments of frustration where maybe the bone isn't completely ready. The timelines are um, what we should expect to happen, but sometimes things just kind of happen differently. You know, everybody kind of heals at a little bit different of a rate. I feel no pain. He's asking me stuff. Like we, and we didn't even do that much yesterday. I leave for USA on February 1st, so you're supposed to tell me uh, a week and a half. I'm supposed to do running, I mean, uh, jumping and February cutting. February 1st, you leave for USA? Yes. That's been sort of the give and take and frustrating part of understanding and feeling what my body is capable of doing. Um, and also understanding that there's a structural component to it that I might not be able to see or feel. This is killing me. She wants to do more, which is honestly just a true indication of where she has become in her sport. She's a leader. She is someone that sets the you know parameters really high and constantly wants to push the limits. She had a lot that she was looking to do this season, right? So she came in, she understands that, hey, back-to-back -back champions, um, there's a target there, we have the Olympics, we have training camps for the Olympics, we have training camps for the W. And so with that, she came with this fight. She was gonna go out there and give it her all, you know, like once you give her the go, it's zero to 100. There is no progression. It's like, if Chelsea gets the green light, Chelsea's going. How's your foot doing now? Hopefully, hopefully it's doing better. Yeah, it's doing well. Um, I had a minor surgery on it to get it all repaired and uh, my foot's feeling better, so I can't wait for next season. All right, before we let you go, you and your wife expecting your first child. How's, uh, uh -oh. how's that prep go? 
Yeah, it was great. It's a journey. <laughs> um, step by step, getting better, but I can't wait. I've been excited this whole time. I've been wanting to, I've been wanting a kid for a while. Bringing a life into this world is really special. Uh, you know, I don't think that either of us take that lightly. And I wanted to have people around that I knew would be a part of our tribe. I think that's a testament to them. Like, you, you get there and you see, like, everybody's just so genuinely happy for these two people. The love, the smiles, the laughter, the happiness. You feel that love. When it's blended with your, your teammates, when your staff, the people that you work with every day that you sometimes spend more time with than your actual family and friends, I think any time that you can get them all under one roof, it's a special feeling. We're here at the beautiful baby shower for Wolf, welcoming him into the world, being so excited to celebrate. How do you think that you all will be as grandparents? I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> Who will choose the baby's name? Uh, me, because I'm calling them Chip. Chelsea and Tip. Chip. <laughs> Advice and what she will bring to Wolf's life. Advice? I will love the mess out of Wolf. I've loved, Wolf. I've loved you since, like, we found out about you. I'll be there. Reach out to me. I'm going to be the funny auntie that you can have fun with. Um, so, yeah, love you. Can't wait to meet you. That's a wrap. We love you all. When I saw her with my boys, the first couple of interactions, I was like, oh man, she's just gonna be a great mom. Like, she's gonna be a fun mom. So just really excited for her to kind of enter into this new identity in a way. After the baby shower, I was like, okay, the countdown is kind of on. But I was talking to Tefessa, I was just like, listen, baby, because we were calling him Wolf at the time. I was like, Wolf, stay in mama's stomach until I have to go, I have to make one more like business move, I have to go to NBA All-Star, just, just stay in there until then. She would be up at like six in the morning to make sure I had breakfast, but to make it to, you know, rehab. And then after rehab, make it to the gym so that she could get some shots up and then, you know, do some body work after and get a lift in. And she was doing all this, you know, as we got closer to the delivery date and we have all these doctor appointments. And then on top of that, she's still doing broadcasting, commentating for the Kings take two of those games out they're in a different position right. and especially this time when you're talking about like playoff 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 you want to be playing your best basketball I need them to bring that energy to Denver <laughs> and have that out there respond to a loss you got two behind you now I need you to bring it in there was a lot on her plate but she never complained she just kept showing up she kept showing up for me and she kept showing up for herself We went down this journey together and I'm so proud of her um, and the way she, she did it. A healthy baby boy, she was healthy. It was scary for me because at the time, like, there's nothing I could do to alleviate her pain, really. Like, I could do pressure points, I could talk to her, but like, it was such a vulnerable place for both of us. Man's first day at camp. <laughs> After experiencing the labor and the birth and like postpartum that I have, like it is my wish that any birthing person has somebody like Chelsea because she has been incredible. She's been supportive. She's been she's been caring. She's been thoughtful, and that's just you know as my wife. Like as a mother, she is you, she is. I just I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> she's just so I couldn't ask for a better person. That. Baby is just our bundle of joy. Like it, it's new territory for for us. We're like learning him. He's learning us. We're learning each other as parents. But we're enjoying it. Like he's such a blessing. You know, Chelsea and Tapessa are wonderful parents to Lennox. But I know that they're enjoying and loving him. And and Lennox is just a, a he's just surrounded with love. It's a total buy-in. You know, it's some things you have to sacrifice in order to make that buy-in work. And I think they're doing a fantastic job with it, you know. You know, sometimes I look at Chelsea, I say, you know, Chelsea just left practice and she'd be dead tired, but she's not tired enough to not to take the time out with Tapessa, as well as Tapessa not taking the time out with Chelsea, and then there's baby Lennox. For her to be one of the best in our game and then to also have a newborn baby and for him to be able to witness 
you know, his mom just freaking dominating all these areas, I think is so dope. And again, those are things that add to her basketball career because now she has something else that she's playing for. Let's go change your diaper. Black man. Oh, I feel like she's finally like getting back to who she who she wants to be on the court, um, which is a testament to the dedication and the resilience that she's had this entire year. Say bye. Say peace out. There we go. Oh. Say bye bye. I see you later. I dunk on you later. Yes, sir. Chelsea's doing everything. She's a mom, she's a wife, she's a broadcaster, also like a freaking <laughs> Olympian, a freaking all-star. Like, Chelsea is so many, she's doing, she has her hand in so many different pots, and for her to still, like, show up every single day, come in, do the work, do it, you know, in a way that where she's coming back and she looks better, I'm just like, damn, that's impressive, man. I can see she's still trying to find her rhythm. She ain't Chelsea Chelsea yet. Oh! But I don't need her to be. I need her to be Chelsea Chelsea in like, you know, July, August, September, October. I think what sets Chelsea apart as well that people don't really notice is she really cares about her team. You know, everything she says day in and day out is, I gotta get back there for them. I gotta get back there for, you know, to prove something. She's already proven it. The limited mobility in her hip doesn't help when you look at that, that load, load management, as well as like activity progression. So in order to make sure that she was safe, I wanted to make sure that the hip was clear, that it was clean, that it didn't add more stress to what she was already dealing with than she necessarily had to deal with. How does the hip feel in general? Um, it's better, like... Uh, range of motion, when you say better? Range or? of motion, mm. better, pain, better um like remember i couldn't even put on shoes by doing this and repeating it it just gives it a better chance we're going to decrease inflammation uh, a lot of the studies you know that are coming out is like it does help build back up the cartilage and that's what we're hoping it does so without any uh, delay let's let's get it on are you ready yeah do you still see the cyst or whatever uh this looks this looks real good if you look for the cyst, that, that is the hip flexor, the major hip flexor, and it looks and look all the fibers through it. They're all homogenous, no cyst. Everything looks good. The capsule is a uh, perfect size. No effusion, no extra fluid in there. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay, relax. And here we go, right here. Great. Sorry. Right, we're in. Oh, breathe. Mm. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's in the joint. Didn't that it? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. That one was. I like that one better than the first one. It means I'm usually in the right uh, place, and I was super happy with that injection today. Super happy. Good job. Okay. Lots of pressure. Or okay. Okay. She's ready. And I think, you know, she's ready to be a part of that team. She wants to be a leader and go out there and do what she does best. Because we have a big season ahead. She has big plans for Team USA. And those are all really integral parts that, of her career that we want to make sure there's no setbacks. You know, if you look at Chelsea and you just, just look at her actions on the court, you know, Chelsea want to play. She wants to play. I mean, no, no doubt about it. And she, and sometimes she, I look at her and I said, Chelsea, you know, you can't rush it. Let it take its course, and then in the end, you'll win. I hit one round of back pass. It's a situation to where Chelsea means so much to our team that if we get 80 to 75 to 60 percent of her back, that's still better than uh, most of the league. I feel good, like going into training camp, I'm healthy. Um, am I at the level of play where I want to be to start the season? No, but May 14th, I'll get there. She is selfless, she is dedicated, she's resilient, she's hardworking. She embodies everything that you need to win and to be successful, and for that reason alone, like, you can't count her out. And she's going to show up when it matters. She always does. 
breaking news out of Las Vegas. Aces guard Chelsea Gray missing significant time this season.